Hey there, Nate here with the Volunteer Tech Vlog on the Live Sound 101 YouTube channel. Uh, there's my little uh, thumbnail photo screenshot there. So uh, I had a couple things I wanted to chat about uh, this in this vlog video. Actually, I'm going to break it up into two vlog videos. Uh, the first one is going to be on Dolby Atmos. So this is kind of just like an audio tech, audio lesson video. So. Dolby Atmos is just something you should probably be aware of just because it's super cool. Now the second thing, which I'll make another video about right after this one, uh, is I got to have a conversation uh, with a guy called uh, Nathan Lively. You may have heard of him. He does a podcast called Sound Design Live. So I had an interview with him last night. It was a lot of fun. So, uh, But I'll chat about that in a minute. What I want to talk about in this video is Dolby Atmos. So what is... Dolby Atmos. So you're probably familiar with like traditional surround sound. Uh, you've got your 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 typical you know five five dot one systems, maybe a five dot two system if you got you know two subwoofers or seven point one or I mean there's all kinds of different surrounds basically um, depending on how many speakers you have in your surround sound system. You've typically got a front a center. Uh, sorry, uh, a front, left, right, center. Uh, you've got like a rear surround, rear left surround, rear right surround, subwoofer. You know, the, the basics. You've, you've, you, you're probably familiar with surround sound. Now, Dolby Atmos, how is that different? And three, and this is, this is, so this is in the realm of what they call 3D audio. And uh, basically, Atmos uh, has different layers you've got like kind of a downstairs layer and an upstairs layer and what that allows you to do is kind of create uh, different mixes or different beds so it's uh, it's comprised of beds and objects which is which is the big objects is the big differentiator so uh, you could have like 118 different objects panning and going from place to place to place but the, the interesting thing is the the panning and the movement is processed in metadata it's not it's not your typical you know pan 50 percent left you know 50 percent right you know or whatever percentage you want to pan something uh into the right or the left it's this is this is done it's pretty cool in the metadata so no matter what type of configuration you have like the speaker configuration might be slightly different from room to room to room but if the system is set up and calibrated properly, uh, that pan information is going to still, the, the, the movement is going to still be there, the object-based movement, um, even if you've got slightly different surround sound set up. So that's kind of like the big thing with like 3D. And then there's a couple. So Dolby Atmos has one. Um, Oro 3D is another one. Uh, DTS-X is another 3D version, but I'm pretty sure DTS-X has all but um, pulled the plug on their project because Atmos seems to have the most steam. So uh, how, now I got, so this is, that was a little intro about what I'm talking about here. Now I got to listen to an Atmos system for the first time this week, which I thought was pretty cool. And um, back when I was at UMass Lowell, I uh, was involved in the, the AES student chapter, so the Audio Engineering Society student chapter. And I um, was pretty involved. I was actually the president of the student chapter there, organizing meetings and, and all kinds of stuff. Like we'd go tour like local broadcast studios. I think we organized a tour up to Nesson one time, Watertown, uh, various things like that. And it's pretty cool just to you know see what's, what's out there. Um, and so, I'm looking at my news feed this week, so this is how I ended up getting to listen to this. And I'm looking at my news feed, and I saw a post, uh, I think from John Crivet, uh, who is uh, actually the president of the uh, AES, and um, he uh, was talking about this event in Natick, Massachusetts, which is where Genelec, the speaker manufacturer, is located. Now, that not not the main headquarters, but the main headquarters for Genelec is in Finland, I believe, but they have a Boston office. And so I saw in my newsfeed a Facebook event that someone set up, and it was a uh, introduction to 3D audio with a listening demo on Genelec speakers, which are very, very, very nice, if you're not familiar. Um, and it was gonna be in their studio, and 
and I thought, man, this would be a great opportunity to get out there and hear what, how much time do I got left? Hear what some of these uh, systems sound like. So uh, it was pretty cool. So Will Eggleston was the main guy leading the demo and they had like free beer and pizza and everything and it was packed it was a packed house i met some some cool folks over there i met a guy named uh chris a guy named ben a guy named kevin um and we were just chatting about atmos and geeking out and it's it's pretty cool going to events like that and kind of uh you know having kids and, and being married and a nine to five job it's like you you, you kind of uh and volunteering you, your plate is kind of full so you don't get to do as much cool stuff uh, as you used to, but uh, this was this was awesome. I got to, to get out there and listen to this system And so basically we for the for the content that we listened back to there was video that went with it um, And we we listened back to Game of Thrones uh, a, a battle sequence Which was one of my favorites. We listened to a sequence from uh, Mad Max Fury Road which had like amazing sound design and mixing uh, obviously in Atmos and then we listened to a track called Audiosphere which um, was was also uh, Very cool if you close your eyes. I realize uh, So they had all these things moving around on screen that the visuals moved around with the audio moving around and It was cool But I got tired of it real quick because my eyes kept trying to correlate what I saw with what I heard and it was just it was it was a neat thing but once i closed my eyes and just listened to the auditory information that coming around me in three dimensions uh it was actually a much more enjoyable experience which is kind of odd now with the movie sequences i did not have that experience i you know the visuals coupled with oral 3d uh just for the sake of a movie awesome so it was, it was a really good uh, big thanks to will for for setting that up and the uh, Boston AES chapter for making that happen. Uh, very, very cool thing. Um, does Atmos, the, here's the big question, now that you, you're familiar with Atmos, does Atmos have wings? Will you see this in people's houses anytime soon? It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a slow adoption. Atmos is gonna be a slow adoption. I think it's gonna spread quickly and it already start, is starting to. It's going to spread quickly in cinema because it's something that you can deploy in a room that's dedicated to that. Um, and it makes a lot of sense to do so because you can, you can kind of um, give people incentive to come buy tickets to sit in a movie theater or put butts in chairs, as people say. Um, so it makes a lot of sense for the, the cinema industry. Uh, who's going to be getting an Atmos system in their home? Well, the home theater geek probably will, like Scott Wilkinson. But... Um, I don't it's getting these speakers up there over overhead is going to be challenging but Atmos has a solution for that they've got these Atmos enabled systems um, so anyway that direct sound bounce sound off the ceiling to get that same effect so anyway I wanted to just mention that a very cool event I got to attend this week and um, Atmos if you're not familiar with it now you know I'll see you in the next video